Okay, in this video, we are going to be creating um, a bra strap by adding a slider to a strap and a ring as well. Um, you guys will be learning how to create an OBJ file. And in order to do that, you'll get to practice your drafting uh, tools, um, get kind of more familiar with those basic tools as well. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I am following along the video from Clo that they made about how to make a bra strap. Um, their video is only 15 minutes long. It goes by pretty quick. So the link is down below if you'd want to check out theirs as well. Um, this video is really designed to kind of break it down and go a little bit slower. Um, okay, so to get started, um, we are going to make a slider. That's a trim that goes on a bra strap so you can adjust the size of the strap if you want it longer or shorter. Um, so to do it, we're gonna draw it, uh, draft it out. And in order to do that, it's easiest if you just get a photograph of a slider and trace over it. So to trace in Clo, um, you'll actually need to make a pattern piece. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead Here's our pattern drafting tools. I'm just gonna choose a basic rectangle. And then I'm just gonna click and drag. It doesn't need to be that big. And actually another tip too, for those of you guys that are new to Clo, you could always just right, oh, hold on, left click. There we are. And um, type in the measurements. A slider is gonna be like, you know, an inch big, not that big. So, um, you know, so if we made our fabric only five inches by five inches, that should be more than enough. So let's do that. Okay, there we go. Here's our fabric. Now I can zoom in pretty easy. I can pan. And in fact, I don't need my 3D window right now. I don't need my library. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Actually, So see these little arrows? I'm just going to close these so they go on the side. Down at the bottom. Ooh, hello. Um, you can choose a view. Um, so I'm gonna choose just the 2D one. There's not 2D, yes. Um, and then actually I do have my library open because for this assignment, um, I did give you a few files to download. So once they're downloaded, save them in a folder, remember where you save them. And it's probably easiest to put them in your library. There's a little plus sign. So you can click that plus sign and then remember where you saved it. It's always so fun. Let's see if I can find mine. Yeah. So let's see, oh, there's mine. I put mine in patterns, the name of the class, module two. Okay, so now when I scroll down and I double click module two, I have those three files that were part of this assignment. Okay, so I don't really need my library anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and just close it so I have a little bit more space and now I'm ready to import one of those um, files into uh, this piece of paper or piece of fabric. Okay, so to import an image into Clo, after you have your fabric drawn, there is this tool over here. It looks like a t-shirt with a little checkerboard on it. You wanna click it just one time. A window pops up because it wants to know, hey, what file do you want? Um, I probably could have just clicked and dragged from the library, but uh, in Clo, there is more than one way to do things and tricky. So anyways, um, I'm here now, so I'm just gonna go to module two and I'm doing the slider. So I'm gonna click slider, I'll say open. And then now it's like, hey, where do you want it? So I'll click in the middle and say, okay. Okay, and I see nothing, something's wrong. So it's probably my settings of my, um, pattern here, it looks like I have it set to monochrome surface, which is not very helpful right now. So I'm gonna change my view to front texture surface and voila, I can see it again. For fun, why don't I try just clicking and dragging from my library? So I guess I will hit delete and here's my slider. What if I click drag and drop it? Uh, nope, I'm gonna say cancel. What if I right click? add as graphic. There we go. So if you right click, add as graphic, that's the same as if you use this tool over here, the graphic tool. Okay, there it is. Now to edit it, um, there's the edit tool and you'll wanna get used to this with Clo. Whenever you see a little white arrow in the top left corner of a little icon, that means edit. So I'm gonna not use this place graphic tool anymore. I'm switching to the edit tool. I can click it and then this way I can rotate it 
and um, try to get it to be a little bit straighter as well. Okay. Okay, that's pretty good. If you're a perfectionist, you can open up um, some rulers and pull out some guides. Let's see if I can remember how to do that. Uh, environment, not where it is, and then show ruler. And then I believe you just click. Oh, oh one thing too, I'm gonna right click Oh, I need to be in my selection tool. So I'm switching to the keyboard shortcuts, the letter A, and then I can right click, and I can actually change this to inches. That's easier for me. And then you can click and drag and pull out a guideline. So you can see like, oh, my trim is still a little bit crooked. So I can go back to my edit graphic tool, that little t-shirt with an arrow, click on it, and just maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. Also, another big tip, please make sure you have a mouse <laughs> with a scroll wheel. I love that the scroll wheel is also a clicker. It's really helpful to pan around. I can't tell you how many students, um, the ones who struggle, we come find out they're not using a mouse. They're trying to just use their trackpad and they don't really enjoy the software as much as the other people that have a mouse. So invest in it you can get a good one for less than 10 bucks it's definitely worth it we don't even have a textbook in this class that's our textbook is the mouse so invest in it please for yourself okay this is pretty good i'm happy with it um let's see i'm gonna switch back to our selection tool and let's see if it'll let me delete it let's what if i click on it can i right delete guideline perfect i right clicked okay i'm panning by pushing my scroll wheel zooming in Okay, so in the Clo video, what they actually trace is they trace the bottom half, but then they trace just half of the bottom half. So, and then they unfold it a couple of times. They use the internal lines to draw inside um, a fabric pattern piece here. So we already have our fabric pattern piece, so I'm not gonna use those tools. I'm gonna scroll down to the internal line ones, and I'm gonna go ahead and use our the line tool, the polygon one. So if you have any experience with Adobe Photoshop using the pen tool, you're gonna really like this tool actually. Um, okay, so I believe what they did, they split the line, da, 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 da. I'm just gonna, here, okay, so I'm gonna go click one time, I'm gonna go straight across, maybe I'll hold shift, and I'll click one time. They did a whole bunch of little clicks, what I'm gonna do instead is click and drag and bring out the handlebars. So I had this handlebars controlling the curve, that top one, and it automatically made a symmetrical handlebar. So now I don't have to click and drag, I can actually just kind of line up my um, cursor so it's underneath that top anchor point. Some guidelines kind of show me. And all I have to do is just click one time if I want. Um, if I still want another curve, I can click and drag again right here. But I think I'm pretty good. And again, I'm only doing half of it, so maybe I'll stop right here. And so, I mean, I'm kind of tempted to just keep drawing and go on the inside, but what Clo did, they used a cool feature to punch a hole, so maybe I'll do that also. Okay, so I'm gonna click there and I'll say return. Okay, so then what they did, they clicked again and drew a second shape, click, click and drag, click and click. Okay, return. Okay. <clears throat> um, they, let's see, okay, so then they traced it also. So let's go ahead, right now it's just internal lines, but we actually want it to be its own pattern piece. So to do that, we do have the tracing tool here. We just need to select our pieces. I'm gonna hold shift and grab all these individual segments. Okay, I'm gonna right click and say traces pattern. Let's see if it'll let me do it. Yes, it did. Um, I just trace the inside and the outside. When you do watch Close original video, they trace them separately and then they put the inside on top of the outside and they made the fabric like opaque, kind of transparent so you could see through it, so you could see the image. But I'm like, I don't need to do that, I'm okay. Another thing that a lot of students always bring to my attention as well is they'll ask, 
hey, you know, I have a nice curved yellow line here, but why isn't it filling with the white fill? Why is the white fill like have these weird little straight lines? And that has to do with basically the resolution, but in 3D, they call it particle distance. The way 3D software works is that they like wrap mesh around an object. And so they use a thing called particle distance. It can be triangles, or I think it could be squares as well. So right now we have a high particle um, distance, and we can actually look at that. If you change your fabric, uh, is it this one? It's one of these, it's so little I can't see. There it is. Um, so this is what our mesh looks like right now. And if I change my particle distance, which is something they do in Clo, they change it really small. They change it all the way down to one. You'll see the difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my property editor. And under simulation properties, we have particle distance. So it defaults in 20. That way it doesn't take too much memory on your computer while you're drafting and kind of getting your project started. But usually towards the end of your project, you do wanna lower the particle distance to get better quality. But right now we're gonna lower it to one, which is kind of crazy, that's very little. Look at how much smaller those little mesh things are. And so now if I go change my fabric back to fabric, um, those little mesh things are so small they can actually line up nicely with that yellow line. So, okie dokie. Um, let's see here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and unfold this guy. Maybe I'll clean up this curve. It is a little funky. So I'm gonna hit the letter Z. I'm gonna bring down my handlebar. I'll do it on both sides. <clears throat> okay, cool. Now, when I select this guy, it's not selecting the entire segment, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete the pattern points. Um, this is tricky because as an internal point on top of a pattern point, there's two points right here. So if I click one, it's like, hey, which one do you want? Do you want the red internal line point or do you want the black pattern point? I want the black pattern point because I wanna delete it. I don't mind that the red one's there. He doesn't really do anything for me. So now when I click this line, I, it's a longer segment. So I'm gonna delete the pattern point here. So you can't really see it because it's underneath the red one, but it is there and I'm gonna delete it. Okay, he's gone now. So now I can select this guy, I can right click, I can say unfold. Okay, so now there's another really cool trick. <clears throat> Let's see the easiest way to do this. I'm gonna switch to uh, the letter A selection tool. I'm gonna select just both of these. I should be able to right click and basically punch a hole through it. So let's see if I can do that. This always takes me a minute to kind of figure out. Okay, that's not quite working. So what I'm gonna do is um, select just the, the internal line. I'm gonna hold shift, I'm gonna right click, and let's see here, mm, I don't see it either. So it could be because um, it's two separate internal line pieces. See that, how it's one and two. So when I right click, there was the option to join overlapping points. I'm gonna do that. And then now when I click it, it's just one shape. So now maybe the function will come up to um, convert, convert to whole. Yay, there it goes. Okay, so now I just need to unfold the other side. Again, I don't really need two segments, so I'm just gonna delete that point. So I have a straight line, right click and unfold. All right, I have a slider. I'm pretty happy with it. I don't need this image anymore. I can go ahead and select it, delete it, clear up my artboard, get rid of it. Um, now, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the 3D window as well. I'm down here at the bottom corner so I can see both. I'm gonna close the library though. Let's kind of zoom in here, see what this guy looks like. I'm gonna rotate a bit. Oh, I'm gonna select it. Sometimes it's easier if the item's selected to rotate, otherwise else you're kind of rotating in space and you can get lost. But if your object's selected, then it'll rotate around your object. So that's my little tip for the newbies. Okay, <clears throat> so I just wanna show you something. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna make this guy thick. When I first did this, my fabric was on the textured surface and I kept making it thick and thick and thick and thicker. And it was staying the same and it was making me crazy. And then I realized, oh, I had the view turned off. So you wanna make sure you have your thick textured surface view turned on. So you don't go crazy like I almost did. Okay, so here we go. So our pattern is selected. And do you guys notice how the property editor, all the tools in it changes every time something's selected, the background selected, or if the pattern selected, or if you select fabric, um, 
all the little options change. So it's really important to make sure if you want to change something that it's selected. So I selected this pattern I, tr I drafted and I'm going to make it thicker because it's really thin. So under simulation, we can do additional thickness and it's set to zero. We're going to change it to four. Okay. Um, I'm look at that. Do you see how much thicker that is? That's more like a, a little slider metal or plastic um, trim you would see. And then another tip is, is to kind of smooth out our edges. Um, so let's see here, they call that curvature and we can bring it down to like 45. That's like another little trick that they did. And if you don't wanna see these red lines, this is just, it won't really be in our drawing. They're just kind of a tool. You can turn them off under here in view. Those are the internal lines that we have on our thing. Okay, so that looks like a pretty good slider, I would say. So we are ready to, um, you know, make this so it's not fabric and change it to like a hard OBJ file so that we can use it to actually put fabric through and it'll stand up and be tough. Okay, so to do it, we have to go up to file, um, export, and we're gonna say export OBJ. And you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and select it um, export and that way I can say OBJ selected. I probably could have just done OBJ, but the video did select it. So I'm going to copy the video. Okay. Let's give it a name. Let's call it slider. Um, slider. Oh gosh. I guess I'm going to call it slider draft because I have another file called slider. Okay. <clears throat> it's an OBJ file. That's good. Save. Okay. Let's check this window because I had some boxes checked wrong and I was really struggling. Um, go ahead, leave select all patterns on, that's fine. Make sure it's single object. Make it thick, choose thick. Under basic scale, where I went wrong, mine was set to M. Don't do that. Make sure it's set to MM default. It will save you so much trouble. Um, everything else is good. Just. X, Y, up, Z, that's all fine. Um, let's see here. I have I have save with the zip and the diffuse color is checked, which is fine. Let me kind of make some of these smaller so we can see what's going on. And okay, now I'll click okay. Okay, so now what I do need to do is I need to unzip that file. So I'm gonna go to finder, I'm gonna find this file so I have to remember where you save everything. And here it is, slider draft zip. I'm gonna double click it. There we go. Okay, so now I can access it. Alrighty. Okay, so open up the practice file that I gave you. Um, I have my folder saved, so all I have to do is just double click it. You can always go file open and find where you saved it on your computer as well. Just gonna ignore that warning. <laughs> okay, so we still need actually need to draft a circle ring, and the circle ring is gonna connect this little tab to the strap. Um, but first, we're gonna go ahead and put our slider on this strap, and we're gonna make the strap longer so that it's actually functional, so that you could slide the slider and the strap will change length. Okay. So let's go ahead and bring in our OBJ file we made. Um, so mine is right here. So I'm just gonna right click, add to workspace. Okay, so in closed video, um, they actually first bring it in as a trim and then they save it. And then they secondly bring it in as an avatar. And I believe the reason is, is because when you bring it in as a trim, you'll see it's not the right size. So we can resize it. Um, once you bring this avatar, it doesn't have that feature. Um, I don't know why we didn't resize it um, in, you know, when we were making it. Maybe that's an option too, so you could skip this step. I don't know. But anyways, we're going to bring it in as a trim. Another thing to pay attention to, please, is um, the scale. I don't know why, but my computer was set to M and it was not working and I was going crazy. I'm like, what is wrong? It needs to be set to MM default, so be really careful about that. Um, all this other stuff seems fine, just X, Y, F, Z. All this can be zero, it's just gonna bring it somewhere kind of at the bottom. I think we'll be good. I'm gonna say okay. 
Okie dokie. Another thing right now, I have my tab set on trims. Your tab's probably set on fabric if you have your object browser open. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, just notice all these tabs are just more tools. We got buttons, we got stitches, we got UV maps, um, puckering, all kinds of fun stuff. So and your screen might look like this, which is fine. Um, okay. There it is, I see it. So I'm gonna click it one time. And because it's brought in as a trim, it has these cool like little tools. So I'm gonna click this little, it's like a sticky glue gun, and I'm just gonna put it up here. So that way, it's, that's how you move it, a quick way to move it, which is pretty nice. I'm gonna zoom in. I don't need my library open. Let's get some more space here. I don't think I need my 2D window open actually. So let's just do 3D. As you can see, it's huge, right? It's way too big. Um, so in the video that Chloe has, they just go to the property editor and change the scale. But you, if you look long enough, you might realize, oh my gosh, there is no place to change scale. So Chloe has updated since that video um, by giving trims its own tab. So when I imported it, here it is, slider draft, that's the one I made. And when I click on it up in this little menu tool, now I can change the scale. So there's two ways to change the scale. One is actually click it and then click this box with a little X and then it gives you this tool to like resize it if you want. Like I can make it shorter. The red one makes it like, you know, squeezes it in. I think the blue makes it like thicker. Uh, maybe not. Yeah. Who knows what that guy, did. I think it made it thicker. There we are. But um, we, I'm just gonna follow the measurements that the video used. So, ooh, with mine's in inches, that might be an issue. Mm. Uh, okay, maybe that's because of my ruler. Oh, no, I wonder how I am in inches. Mm. So, maybe not. Let's see here. What would be the best way? Because, yeah, because they were in millimeters. What if I click this little button? No. I'd like to change to millimeters. Ooh, I just. Hey, something new to learn. I'll have to figure out how to, do, oh, I know it must be up in settings, but I love working in inches. So maybe I can change it back. So let's go to maybe user settings. Is this where it is? This is something I don't do very often. Okay. Hmm. Unit system. Okay, I found it. Ooh. I guess I'll change it to millimeter for a minute. Okay, so that was under user interface and user settings. Okay. How, let's see if that works. I'm going to click my slider. Um, yep. Maybe it worked. Yeah. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to type in 12. Is this going to work? Hmm. Oh no, it's still in inches. <laughs> Maybe we have to like restart the file. Um, okie dokie. Good to know. Okay, so then in that case, I'm gonna go back to settings, user settings, uh, user interface. I'm going back to inches because I like my inches. Just the way I work. If it will allow it, yes. Okay. And yeah, let's just rescale this then with this tool. That's what we're just gonna have to do. Let me click that tool one more time. Okay. What if I hold shift? Will it keep it proportional? No. Okay.
Okay, I'm gonna try moving it. So I'm clicking that box to get out of the scale. And then that brought my gizmo back. It's still too big, but I'm gonna rotate it a little. Um, let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna click the scale thing again. Zoom in. Click the scale button. Am I too close? <laughs> okay. Might be a little bit too close. There we go. Okay. How's the thickness? Not too thick. It's a little thick. Let's see. Okay. So let's look at what measurements I got. And if you want, you could just type in those measurements or you can play with that um, resizing tool and resize it to your liking as well. So I'm clicking slider. Um, I'm scrolling down in the property editor. Okay. Oh gosh. It really didn't do anything. <laughs> it's That's weird. Huh. I don't know why the measurements didn't really change. Interesting. So strange. Okay. Well, moving on. Um, we are now going to go ahead and just finish this guy, save it as a uh, OBJ file, a new one. So I'm going to go ahead and, whoopsies, no, I don't want to select you. Whoopsies, I accidentally unsimulated. I'm going to say edit undo. And I just want to select this guy, not the bra strap. There we go. And then I'm going to, um, actually I can just say file, export, object selected, OBJ selected. Okay, um, slider small size. Let's see how that goes. <clears throat> okay. Oh no, let's see here. Uh, I'm not, oh gosh, I think I have to select the pattern, but I don't know. Oh, here we go. Hmm. I don't know which, oh no, I don't have to select any patterns. That's right. Yes, yeah, so select no patterns, perfect. No avatars, single object, thick, scale MM, default, good. Let's see, do that drop down menu. Save colorways, I don't know if we need that. Mm -mm, I'm gonna undo that one. Um, save with texture files, sure. Okay, I'm gonna say okay, let's see what happens. Okay. Now let's see here. Um, now let's do, let's see if it's there. Oh, I have to unzip it probably. So I'm going to go find this file uh, under patterns. Mm, where did it go? Oh, there it is. I'm going to actually move it here and give it a double click. Okay, so small size, perfect. Um, okay. Let's see here. So now let's see if I can open it as an avatar. So let's open up library. Um, okay, slider, small size. There it is, my folder. Click this guy, right click, add to workspace. Okay, add avatar, MM, 100%. Great, all this is looking good. I'm gonna say, okay. Okay, let's take a look. It has a gizmo. Bring it up. Are you there, little guy? Oops, lost it. There he is, yay! Okay, so let's go ahead and move him to the bra strap. And this one in trim, I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete it. So I'm just gonna right click, oh, it won't let me. So I think I have to select it, so I don't get them mixed up. 
So you delete. Oh no. Try that again. Okay. Okay, it's gone. I can trash it. Um okay. Great. So now you guys get more practice with the gizmo tool. Also keep in mind, you know, practice using those keyboard shortcuts like number two, four, six, eight. Um, they can be really handy as well. Oops. <laughs> it's inside her body. Bring that out a little bit. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll bring it a little bit closer. Okay, great. Okay, <clears throat> so next we're gonna go ahead and pull the fabric. Let's see here. Okay, so now that this is an avatar, um, there's a couple things we should change in our property editor. Um, so we want the strap to get pretty close to it, but not like run into it. So, um, so we'll want to change our skin offset amount. So it looks like it's selected right now. So that means that it should have the right tools in the property editor. Let's see. It thinks it's an avatar and right now the skin offset is set at three. So it's, it's kind of like, it's like this like gravity that pushes it away so that the clothes that you design don't like fall inside the avatar. Um, but because we're working so closely, it's going like under and over this thing. Um, three is a lot. That's a really strong gravity force. It's going to like pull the fabric away from this trim. So they um, changed it to just point 0.2. So that's super close. So, okay, so make sure you do that. Changing the skin offset. I know it doesn't have skin. Uh, whatever, just go with it. Um, okay. And then our strap itself the pattern piece of the strap um, we're gonna adjust that as well too um, so I'm selecting the strap you can see the property editor changes now it's gonna be for the strap and they have us change the additional thickness collision to point two so these pieces also have like the gravity thing around them so we're gonna lower it let's see if we can find that guy There we go. So it's at uh, 2.5. We're gonna drop it down to only 0.2 so they can get really close together. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and um, select this fabric. Let's see, actually. Now we're gonna work on our bra strap. Our bra strap is currently short. Um, eventually it's gonna actually slide through a little ring that's here and come back up and go through the slider and that's how it'll stay on the slider. Um, that way then the strap's actually adjustable. So we are gonna make our strap longer. We wanna make it really this length where my mouse is to the bottom. So I'm just gonna click on it, kind of like right where it meets the slider in the middle. And what's so handy is that you get a blue dot on the 2D pattern. So um, that's gonna help me um, basically draw an internal line. Maybe I will um, split the line actually. So I'll hit the letter X, keyboard shortcut um, to split the line. Here's the keyboard up here. Um, so X, and then I'm just gonna click this one time Okay, so that just added um, basically a point to that segment line on the pattern piece, splitting it up, 
Then I'm going to actually draw an internal line. So there's my points. I'm going to switch to my selection tool. So I'm going to click the letter Z and I'm going to select that little point. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go ahead and say add perpendicular internal line. It's so funny how they always do perpendicular. Um, so I want it to go across, which is X. So but because it's opposite, it's perpendicular, I have to choose Y. And if you get it wrong, you can always just say edit undo and do the other one. Um, extend, let's take a look. You can always move your window too to see what's going on. Yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. I want it to go straight across, perfect. Okay, cool. Um, so now I can select this bottom guy and it's telling me it's 3.332 inches and I can make a new strap that's also 3.332 inches. So I'm gonna do that with my pattern drafting tool, the rectangle one. And I'm just gonna go ahead and, ooh, how wide is it though? I should probably check and see how wide it is. It's 0.35. Okay, let's see if I can remember all that. Okay, so I want it 0.35, and then I think I said oh, 3.332. Probably should have wrote that down. Okay, looks good. I'm gonna scroll, let's just kind of put it right here. Um, now I'm gonna use the arrangement points to get it on the avatar. So I'm turning on my arrangement points, my pattern is selected. Maybe I'll just click this one right here just to kind of get it here. I'm gonna get rid of my arrangement points uh, my gizmos here and kind of move it around and I think I'll just bring it down kind of underneath this guy and I'm gonna sew it to this so it's gonna be extra long okay so let's do that there we are um, one thing I noticed in their video is I think they put pins at the bottom of this so it doesn't like move around all crazy so if you've never used that now is a good time to learn um, it's part of the different selection tools. We will use these selection tools later when we start moving the strap around. Um, the pins is also a selection tool, but it freezes it, which is nice. It ignores uh, gravity. So you can either select by clicking and dragging a box or by drawing like a weird lasso shape. So I'm gonna do box right now, and I'll just click and drag the very bottom. There we go. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna sew my strap together. So I'm gonna go click click. Hopefully that did not twist it. I think we're okay. Um, I'm going to bring it closer together so it doesn't have like a huge impact once I simulate. Bring it down. Okay. Alrighty. Oh my gosh. Hopefully that's pretty good. Okay. Great. Okay, let's see if I'm missing anything. Um, on the new strap, we also want to change our particle distance to be small since we're really getting nitty gritty here on these details. So it's selected right now. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to three right now. And then I'm gonna change the uh, collision as well. Let's see if I can, oh, yes. Okay, scrolling up to find my additional collision. Oh, it was below it. <laughs> so it's set at 2.5, we're gonna change it to just 0.2. So it can get really close to all this stuff and hopefully it'll work out great. Um, okay, I guess we're gonna simulate here. So I'm gonna hit the space bar and we just want to see our strap dangle. There it is, it's dangling. Let it kind of calm down. Great, okay, now I'll hit spacebar again to unsimulate, bring back, um, freeze everything. Okay, um, so now we're gonna fold this guy up so you will be introduced to the fold tool if you've never used that before. Um, okay, so let's find our fold tool. Here it is, see how it has like, it's like a little 90 degree angle with a little arrow. We're gonna click that guy and then you actually wanna select your pins. So I'm gonna click those pins and then I should be able to just bring this guy up. Voila, we want it kind of behind it. There we go. 
Okay. Um, here it's saying to simulate and unsimulate, but I'm worried if I simulate, this guy's gonna fall down. Whoops, did I move it again? I did not mean to do that. What happens if I simulate? <laughs> oh, why is he so crooked? What happened here? I'm gonna change my selection tool. Click this guy and kind of rotate it a little bit. Scooch him over. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna hit eight. Scroll in. Maybe if I rotate it a little like this. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, um, so now we're gonna select the edge of the new pattern. We're gonna make it a little bit longer so that we can sew it to itself and make a little loop. So I'm gonna hit the letter Z and let's see here. Um, the edge of it is actually gonna be this bottom part right here. So to make sure, I'm just gonna get my regular selection tool, I'm gonna to click right here. Yeah, see all that blue dots down here? So I can go back to Z, click this guy, and they're gonna have us offset it. They said 10 millimeters. Oh gosh, that's right, we're not working millimeters, we're working in inches. Um, Okie dokie. So let's say, Offset pattern outline. Um, I guess I could look up what 10 millimeter is in inches, or I can just kind of eyeball what's happening here. Um, maybe I'll say, what if I said half an inch? And extend. Okay, there we go. Um, is that enough? I'm worried though. Let's see. Okay. So I did half an inch, so I'm gonna do another half inch again. Let's see. Um, okay. And that'll make an internal line right here. So that internal line is basically gonna be my fold line. And I'm gonna to wanna to sew this part to this part and that will make a little bit of a loop. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and select this line. It is already selected, whoops. So I'll hit Z, select that guy, go to my fold tool, zoom in in here. Okay, I'm gonna fold, um, my, I have my notes, I think I folded, they folded right sides together. I don't, should I fold wrong sides together? I don't even know if it matters. Okay. And then I'm gonna sew them together. So I'm gonna say click. Oh, you know, I need to put an internal line here in order to sew it. Click, oh, cancel. Let me hit G, that's a keyboard shortcut for the internal line click and click. Perfect. Okay, so now I can go to my segment sewing tool, click that top internal line, click the bottom edge, um, and then you know, I'm gonna put pins here so that it stays where it is. Cool. Okay, and I'll hit spacebar to simulate. I got myself a little loop, that's exciting. Oh, and I'm out of, in outer space, okay. Okay, so let's put this on our little clip. Um, and make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah. Ah, okay, so before we put this on the little slider guy, um, 
the Clo tutorial actually changed the particle distance of the strap to be even smaller than three, if you can believe it. So I'm going to select both and they changed it down to just one. So that's tiny. Okay. Um, okay. And, and now we're just going to try to move them with our selection tool. So let's go ahead and do this. So let's see here, I'm going to go, aha, uh -huh. okay, so I'm going to go ahead, use my selection tools, not the pin, but just regular selection, select mesh, I'm going to do the box, I'm going to click and drag over this internal line here, okay, great, and then I'm going to select it on the 3D window so a gizmo pops up. And I'm going to try to pull it over our slider. Let's see if that worked. Am I too far away? I'm not sure. Let's zoom in. Okay. Ah. Okay. I'm going to select it again. So I'm going to click and drag. Go. Make this guy go up just a little bit. Cool. I think that's good. Pull it out some. Okay. Then I'm going to have to get this guy also to go over um, that little slider guy. So I'm going to switch to my regular, regular selection tool. I'm gonna click right there on this guy so I can get a blue dot. Hmm, I don't think that was working, let's see. Okay, so basically in the middle here is where I'm gonna select it. Mesh, here we go. Pick you. Use the blue arrow. Am I getting the right thing? I don't know that I am. Uh oh. Let's try that again. Zoom in. Click the selection tool. So, yeah, that's what I want this part right here. So I'm going to try one more time. There we go. Ah, why did it go away? Hmm. Is it still there? No, something weird happened. Okay. Well, I know I have my pins there. I'm just going to hit simulate for well I don't want to simulate because of that part okay we can do this hmm what if I change it to pins maybe I don't know maybe I can delete these pins so let's take these pins I've selected those I'm actually gonna get my yeah actually no that was good I'm gonna select those pins right click um, delete selected pin okay maybe this will help us then I'm going to try to select a little bit there, just right here. So I'm trying to get all of this. Great. Click it. Great. Now I'll move it. I feel like they make it look so much easier in the other video. <laughs> they have so much more control. Okay. I'm definitely too far left. This is going to be a mess. I'm a little worried. Okay. Um, And I think I'm going to do is I'm going to select this strap, scooch it over a bit. Oops, not you. You, the whole strap. There we are. Okay. 
Oops. Okay, are those pins? What was, I thought I was just selecting it, but maybe not. Looks like I accidentally used pins. I didn't mean to do that, I just wanted to select it. So I can delete the pins. Okay, I'm gonna delete these pins too. Oh my gosh, I'm worried that this is not gonna work, but um, let's give it a shot. Um, oh, did I sew this guy down? Yeah, I sewed him down, okay. Space bar. Okay, I hit space bar again to kind of stop it. Getting there, we're getting there. Kind of pop back, that's okay. Um, so let's see what I can do. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this part of the strap again. Okay, so when I click right here, that's that internal line. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move that again. So I'm gonna use my selection tools. Oops, right below. Select mesh box. I'm gonna click just where that internal line is. Great. And no gizmo popped up. Let me try one more time. Here's the gizmo. Turn it back. And then I'm gonna try again. Maybe I could try putting this top part over. Maybe that's what I just need to do. I don't know. Let me try again. Okay, so. If I click with my selection tool, switching back to A, I click right here. Where is that? Okay, it's pretty close. So I'm gonna switch to my selection tool, just select, no pins. I'm gonna try selecting this part. I'm gonna try to bring that around. Oh, let me, let me make sure I select it first. The gizmo pops up. Okay, there's our gizmo. Oh boy. I guess I'll bring it down a little in this way. Hmm, a little messy. Okay, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna hit space bar. Oh, I think it did it. Yay! I'm gonna space bar so I don't push my luck. Um, okay, so our particle distance is one. We got it on the little slider. Um, dun, 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 dun. They do more sewing for some reason. They sew this guy twice. I kinda wanna skip that. Um, so, it. Okay, so now what it does, it takes what they do in the video, they take this little loop guy, and this is a fold line right here, that little fold line. They select it, and in the property editor, they just make sure the fold line is at 360, so let's see where it's at right now. Yeah, it's 348, so they just slide it all the way to 360. Um, they simulate again, great. Fine. I'm unsimulated. Um, they delete the internal line on the outer straps, so let's go up there. They just get rid of it for some reason. Goodbye. Um, let's see here. They simulate again. Okay. I'm going to unsimulate. 
Um, cool. And that's it. It's on the slider. Let's look at this and enjoy it. Oh, you guys. Whoa, come back. Isn't that so beautiful? Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Love it. Um, okay, so then they move now this guy a little bit closer. They, the pins are there, so they select the pins with just the regular letter A selection tool. And they kind of move it a little bit closer and then they simulate again and they get ready to put in the ring. Okay. Okay, so the last step is to add in that ring. Um, because we did so much work with this slider, we're gonna be kind of messing around the bottom. I think it'd be really smart to um, put some pins in this area so it doesn't move around. Um, so let me see, I'm just gonna click right here. Where is that again? Okay, cool. So let's get our pin box uh, here and just put in some pins right there so it doesn't move anywhere. Uh, maybe also in the other side, just for fun. Just for fun. Where's that at? There it is, yeah. We will remove those pins at the end. So pin box, like, hey, just nobody touch. Stay still. Okay, cool, because we're gonna kind of mess with the bottom here. Okay, so I need to make my O-ring. Um, real quick, I tried just using the trim that comes with um, Clo, uh, and I tried saving it as an avatar or bringing it in as an avatar, but then it disappeared and I couldn't really see it. So it's probably here somewhere. I'm not sure, but it didn't really work. And I don't want to bring it in as a trim because the trims, they kind of just sit there and this one, we're going to be pulling on it. So it does need to be brought in as an avatar. Um, so that means I just have to make a trim. Oh my gosh. I was hoping to skip it, but it's not happening. So I'm going to go over to my 2D side here's my it's nice having my straps here and i'm gonna draft um a little circle so i'm gonna go to my drafting tool for patterns and they have ellipse i'm gonna do that um oh i should measure how big this is first i'm gonna go back to the letter z keyboard shortcut the edit pattern just select it, it says it's 0.35 so your trim might honestly it might be three eighths or it might be just a quarter inch big um I don't know, that's a good thing to think about. So um, I probably want it smaller than 0.35, honestly, just a little bit. So I think I'll start with a quarter and just see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna just click one time so I can type in 0.25. Um, okay. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna actually bring it over, just kind of look at it. It might be, okay, that's good for the inside, but let's make the outside a little bit bigger. So, hmm. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say, um, I wonder if it'll let me extend pattern. Hmm, I don't know. Oh yeah, offset pattern outline, yeah. Um, maybe just, uh, gosh, how big, like, I don't know. Hmm. 0.15, is that a good one? Let's see, oh, that's much too big, okay. One, what about even less? 0.08, six, maybe that's good, six, okay. And I'm gonna say okay, great. Okay, so I have a baseline here. Now, again, do you remember how why we have the white fill that's not really filling um, our blue line? That's because of our particle distance. So let's go ahead and make this particle distance all the way down to just one. Slows down our computer, but it's really small, so I think it'll be okay. And then I'm also gonna actually, this is a baseline just to kind of show us, hey, this is where your pattern was. It doesn't really do anything other than be a reference line. So I actually would like it to be an internal line so I can use it to chop out that hole. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go ahead and unlock all baselines. Now it's not working because I'm on the pattern. So that's another thing with Clo too, like depending where your cursor is, different menus will pop up when you right click. So in this case, if I wanna unlock the baselines, I actually have to click on the artboard. Isn't that funny? And then I can right click and a different menu kind of pops up. 
there it is, unlock all baselines. I'll take it, now I can select it, and let's see here, I'm gonna go ahead and convert to internal line. Cool. Now that it's an internal line, I should be able to right click again and hopefully punch a hole. Let's find out. Okay, convert, convert to hole, lovely. Okay, it is still funky. Is this really one particle distance? Let's just double, double check. Simulation prior, it says it's one, okay. Um, Okay, so let's go ahead and add our additional thickness. We added four previously, so we'll do that. And then we also um, played with our curvature. We made it to like about 45%. That's just from following the video. Okay, cool. And we can go look at it in a 3D window. Maybe that's a good idea. Let's see what we're working with. There he is. It's like a little Cheerio in the sky. Okay, that guy is way too thick. I mean, oh, come back here. I'm gonna select it so I can go around it. Uh, is it just too small, maybe? Oops. This is where maybe it's smart to trace something, right? Yeah. Ooh. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna select the inner circle and I'm gonna right click. And let's see here, offset, uh, I have to offset as internal line, fine. I was hoping to offset as a pattern. Um, okay, so distance, probably 0 0.0, oops. Two, what happens if I did that? Anything? Who doesn't like it? Is that too small? Uh, zero. There we go. Uh, nope, it needs to be less than that. No. Maybe three. Well, let me do... What if I did two? I don't think it likes two, but I'm going to try it. Okay. And then I'm going to use that. And I think I'll just say cut. Okay, cool. Um, alrighty. Hmm. Okay, what if I do this guy and delete it? Oh no, that is this one. Why does it look still like such a cheerio? Okay, so it's probably too thick, so let's change it to not be four. We'll bring it down to like two. Okay, how's that? Ah, come back, come back. Okay. So I'm gonna hit the number two, zoom out. Actually, I'm gonna hit the number eight. I'm gonna zoom in. Um, I'm gonna put on the arrangement points just to kind of bring this close by. Here we go. Why is it? Oh yeah, okay. Now let's see if I can find this little pattern that I made. There it is. I'm just going to make it a little bigger. Okay. 
Okay. So it's still kind of like, like wide. Um, so let's see if I can make that, if I can fix that a little bit. So I'm gonna select the outer edges. Okay, offset pattern outline. Instead of extend, I wanna do retract and we're gonna retract by not a lot. Um, ooh, actually. 0.06, do I like that? Let's see, is that too much? Let's just say, okay, oh, do I get a preview on the 3D? Not really, no. I'm gonna say, okay. Oh no, that made it bigger, whoops. Try that again. Um. O2. Hmm. Did not really work. Maybe I can manually move it. I'm definitely wishing I traced a, uh, a ring right now. This will do. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this guy with the letter A keyboard shortcut tool. And um, yeah, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and export it. Since I did spend time resizing it, which we didn't do last time, I'm gonna try to just um, bring it in as an avatar instead of a trim. So I do need to export as an OBJ. The other file when we exported, there was nothing else in it. This one has a this one has a couple avatars and lots of pattern pieces. So this is gonna be experimental. Let's see if I can export it, even though there's all this other stuff in this file. So file export um, OBJ selected. Okay, we're gonna call it the O-ring, but I'm gonna save it somewhere special. Okay, so let's see about these patterns. Oosh. Okay, what if I don't have it checked? I'm worried, I feel like I need to bring in that pattern, but we'll find out. Um, thick, single object, MM default. I think everything else is okay. I'm a little bit worried about not bringing in the correct pattern. I didn't catch what its name was. So I'm just gonna say okay and see what happens. Okay, now let's see if it's there. So let's go back to module two. Um, I called it O-ring, there's a zip file, I need to go unzip it. So let's go over to my folder to unzip that guy. Where's my O-ring? There it is. Give it a double click. Okay, cool, he's unzipped. So now I can go back to main folder, module two, um, O-ring folder. Oh, and it has two of them, hmm. Okay, add to workspace, avatar, MM. Okay, no data found. Ah, I think it needs a pattern. Let's try this guy. Yeah, no data found. Okay, so what is this pattern's name? This pattern, if I select it, let's change the name from that weird number and just call it O-ring. That'll be easier to find. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's try again. File, um, wait, before I try again, I kinda wanna throw away this old one. Mm, trash, and this guy, so I can give it the same name. Okay, um, select it, file, export, uh, OBJ, selected, O-ring. 
misspelt it, two eyes. Okay, so patterns. Where is our pattern? Uh-oh. I don't see the pattern. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well then let's say cancel. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, here we go. Actually, it didn't change the name like I thought. Ah. Okay. Um, let's call it ring this time. Let's try again. Okay. File. Export. OBJ selected. Um, ring. Save. Go to patterns. There it is. Yeah, it's selected. Perfect. Um, okay. I think that's everything. So maybe I had it selected wrong the first time. I just had like the internal circle selected, not the outer one. And it did automatically check my pattern. I didn't have to go in and do that. So let's see if this will work. Um, so I'm gonna go to ring, I'm gonna unzip it. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna give it a shot. There it is. No, it has two again. Oh, I'm not feeling comfortable or confident. Oh, did it work? It's exciting, okay. So this one, I can delete, don't need it. And now I have my avatar ring, so I can actually sew the strap around it. at the number eight. Okay, I'm gonna hit the number two, four. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna simulate. Ooh, I'm gonna stop simulating. I'm gonna select that little piece of fabric with the letter A selection tool. I'm gonna edit undo a couple times actually. Okay, I'm gonna select that little piece of fabric. Just the little guy, uh, not the pins. Make sure I'm on A, yes. Oh, it's picking up my pins. Let's see if I can find the pattern piece here. There it is. Okay, click. Hey, now the pattern piece is selected. And let's change the uh, particle distance. Let's make sure our particle distance on this guy is down to one. Okay, he is. And what about the um, skin? Oh, we have to change the skin offset on this guy. I forgot. 
let's see here, particle distance, anything else we needed to change? We can change our collision to 0.2. And then let's do the skin offset on the avatar, bring that down as well. Um, okay, to point two. Okay. Now let's try a space bar. Yeah, it's not freaking out as much, which is good. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, so now we can use the pins to bring this guy around it as well. Kind of messy. Let's see if I hit spacebar. Hmm, it actually worked. Almost. Spacebar. Okay, let's get our pins selected again. Great. Scooch it over a little bit. Spacebar. Okay, using my hand to kind of pull out some of the, nope, don't do that. Space bar, okay. So I'm gonna select just this part of the strap. I need to go figure out where that is. Oop, there's my blue dot. And let's go ahead and get my selection tool, not a pin, just selection. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select that little part. Oh, that was too high. Okay, good. Hopeful or not, just trying to kind of yank it out. Ah, I lost it. Oh, I'm gonna get rid of the pins. Select those pins, right click and delete selected pin. Oops, oh, I don't know what I deleted. Okay, yeah, it's fine. There we go, yay! The strap's on the ring, so great. I'll delete these pins also. Let's see how that's looking. I think it's looking really good. Um, the other thing that Clo did was they put an internal line and they added some elastic. I don't know if that's supposed to make it tougher or not. Um, I don't really think it needs it, but we can do that real quick anyways. So I'll hit space bar and I'm gonna go ahead and select this bottom part. Where is it? Okay, so it's at the seam line here. So they would just select right here and they go to the property editor and turn on elastic. So on, they were fiddling around with it. So they started with 50, they didn't like it. They moved it to 60. So um, it's under ratio. So let's just, I guess, put it at 60. The default's 80. Okay. Does that make any difference? Does that look prettier to us? I don't know, I feel like I kind of liked it better the other way, to be honest with you. Yeah, so I think for me, I'm gonna say edit undo. Uh, I'm just gonna, just gonna get rid of it. Okay, I'm gonna hit spacebar. Stop, I'm gonna click those pins, I'm gonna delete them. Okay, then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna delete all my, well, my other pins. Delete selected pin, pick you. Delete selected pins, I am in simulation mode. Okay, cool. So that's the assignment, is making this bra strap. We did it, hooray. Um, and if you don't like seeing some of these lines, you can turn on your view to say like, I don't wanna see internal lines and I don't wanna see baselines. Oh, seam lines I don't care about. What's this one? Baselines, that made those go away. Um, there you go. You have a bra strap. Hooray.